okay before I officially start the AMA session. Um, I have nothing to say. We can just start, and uh, yeah, let's let's proceed. Hello, everybody. My name is Drago, and I'm the chief game developer on Cosmic Universe project. And during this AMA session, or the second part of the AMA session that we had on the 7th of September. During this uh, session, I'm going to be answering the question that uh, we didn't have the time to cover. And uh, let's go. So the previous session ended with a question. Is there a cooldown period for swapping between wizards and elves? That's answered. And the first question for me, I guess, would be from uh, Phoebe. And that is... What level do wizards have to be to get a dragon and else for spirit elk? This won't happen in the mini game, right? It's only in the full fledged game. Um, I can partially answer this question right now. Uh, we still haven't decided to, uh, to what level your wizards or elves would need to be in order to qualify for a creature, for a pet, so to say. Um, that's to be decided. Uh, and yes, correct, this won't happen in the minigame itself. It's only for the fully fledged uh, game. Uh, next question is, will there be merchandise soon as extrovert? That, that's, not an, uh, that's not a question for me. Uh, let me see. What is the next question that is specific to video games? I'm still trying to find one. Okay, here's one. What are the requirements or qualifications for playing your game? And who is eligible? Is there a step-by-step -step guide or tutorial available for those new to your game? Is it free to earn or need any NFTs or tokens to start the game? This question was uh, posted by... Uh, Marina Gomez user on our community server. Uh, requirements. Basically, if you have played any video games ever, you'll be qualified, capable of playing uh, our game. At the end of the day, it's, uh, it's a video game. Um, who is eligible? Uh, like I said, everybody, I would say. Uh, you need, however, you need to have at least one uh, character and one land plot. That's the basic uh, requirement. But if you don't have one, I believe you'll be able to rent them from someone. So, yeah, I guess that's the answer. If you don't have any, you can rent from someone and if you have surplus uh, abundance of uh, land plots or characters you can rent to someone so you get extra uh, income and they get to play the game and vice versa oh i guess that's the answer for the first question the next question is there a step by the uh, the next question from the same person is there a step-by-step -step guide or tutorial available for those new to your game? Um, at the moment, no. But we do have a gameplay demo that you can download from CosmicUniverse.io uh, website. Uh, we are going to have supplementary uh, documentation such as uh, tutorials, uh, text guides and all of the things uh, that are coming uh, uh, with that such as uh, the lore itself is gonna cover some of the stuff uh, you will be covered and uh, we are gonna have the gameplay demo itself is meant to be like a tutorial 
something that uh, allows players to get a glimpse of uh, the fully fledged game. But to make this longer answer short and simple, yes, you will be covered. Is there anything right now? Yes and no. I would rather say no. No specific tutorials, but uh, you will be supplied with those. You'll be covered. Is it free to earn or need any NFTs or tokens to start the game? Uh, this is something that I've already covered partially. But you will be able to earn NFTs. You will not have to uh, necessarily uh, buy every single one. There are going to be competitions uh, which would uh, give you rewards, of course. Um, so, yeah, that's the answer. You can buy, but you won't necessarily have to buy every single thing. You'll be able to earn some of them. Uh, let me see what would be the next question for myself. I'm trying to find those who, uh, who are specific for game development side of things. Mm. Uh, Michael Butler, I think these three questions are not for me. Okay, uh, this third question I can cover. Currently, many games right now are hacked. So, we wonder if you guys have any plan for anti-hacking and anti-cheating system or scheme. If any, can you tell us about it? Um, here's the thing that is specific about Cosmic Universe and uh, I, I can definitely answer this question. Many blockchain based games and developers they are not in most cases they are actually not game developers frankly speaking they are someone who was or is good at blockchain or if i may say at marketing and they acquire amounts of money and they are like okay you know let's start working on the game itself and this is the problem from my own perspective because people are operating way outside of their comfort zone. Me personally, myself and my team that I'm leading, we are by default game developers first, 3D artists, game developers. So we develop games. That's something that we've been doing for, for years until like until today for years and we are planning to continue doing that but other projects vast majority of them they are centric around blockchain and in order to have a successful game based off of blockchain you need to cover multiple things my colleague Cajun is taking care of blockchain side of things and him and I are together working closely on making sure that things are connected properly because the game itself has to communicate with uh, with blockchain and with Dawn of Krypton and 3D NFT showroom we are doing exactly that we are connecting the game itself with with the blockchain and from my side of things and my team's uh, side of things uh, we are making sure that the game itself is working properly now, let me be, go uh, and talk specifically about anti-hacking and anti-cheating system. Uh, that's one of the reasons why we are using Unreal Engine, which has a built-in systems for multiplayer connectivity. And I can go even deeper on, on these things, but I'm going to try to be brief, okay? Although this is a technical question, so I cannot uh, cover that uh, in, in a couple of seconds so server e dedicated server is your god and uh, you need to make sure that you are setting up the game itself so that any user no user has authority to change data on the server or on other players instances 
and that is accomplished in such a way that you make the server be your king, your god, who's making all the decisions. And I'm trying to make this rather short, but uh, you gotta be smart how you architect uh, the game itself from software perspective. Uh, Anti-cheating anti uh, system or scheme, uh, we don't have anything that is custom because there is no need for that. We are using all, uh, I mean, we are already using the tools that are already available. But many people don't know how they should, uh, how they should use them. But we do know. Anti-hacking, that might be partially a question for blockchain side of things. And uh, I cannot answer that when it comes to overall platform security. But uh, uh, the short answer, the shortest answer that I can provide would be uh, we do have anti-cheating uh, implementations. And I've explained some of them how you quickly how you can uh, avoid be, uh, having your game be be immune to hackers and cheaters by making the server be the king the decision maker and yeah that's it let me proceed with the next question glenn is asking will will be game will the i i think he meant will the game have a chat box to communicate or to communicate or even a speech functionality uh the answer to both is yes there is gonna be a chat box uh, communication uh, option feature and yes there's gonna be a uh, voice chat as an option in the fully fledged game uh let me scroll to the next question uh, uh, Onya Ashish had two questions the first one isn't for me the second is does the game allow players to uh, does the game allow player to player interactions? Will your game have special rewards for the most outstanding builders players of the week? Uh, let me cover the first question first. Uh, does the game allow player to player interactions? Uh, yes. Yes, definitely. The reason for that is because we are building a proper MMORPG game not just like any other blockchain based project uh, game which is uh, what we game developers internally call walking simulator and why we are calling them such because you can just walk and not do more more than that yes you will be have player to player interactions uh, and uh, connecting uh, to the previous question for example you'll be able to chat and uh, you'll be able to see other people's uh, magics uh, they are gonna be uh, player versus environment player versus uh, other players uh, mechanics uh, games that we are working on so the answer is yes they are gonna be player to player interactions Will your game have special rewards for the most outstanding builders, players of the week? Um, I would say probably yes, why not? In order to encourage players to, to be creative, to be uh, good and uh, to compete to some extent. Uh, the details are something that I cannot share at the moment because they are simply not decided as of right now. But my answer is, yeah, probably yes, why not? I don't see any reason not to have at the moment let me see the next question and uh, uh, Schwaver is asking 
a few questions and I'm gonna cover those who I think are meant for me or that I can answer. Um, will there be any loot box or other RNG? RNG by the way stands for Render Number Generator uh, for those who don't know. Uh, will there be any loot box or other RNG treasure box type uh, prizes in the bet beta version of the game so we can get uh, in early and scoop that good loot? Maybe a prize wheel? Love a prize wheel? Um, I would answer maybe. Maybe not. This is something that uh, we are keeping an eye on. And at the moment, I don't have any definite answer. Could be and might not be. How many land plots do I need to have together to be able to build the amusement park? And how soon can we start building? Uh, how many plots? Uh, well, taking into consideration that a single land plot is 50 by 50 meters in dimension. Um, I would say you would need at least 2 by 2 but this isn't decided as of right now so I, this is literally my guess uh, that's something that we are still up to make a decision about um, and how soon can we start building uh, well I would say uh, in a few months time that's what I can answer at the moment any plans for EVM chain interoperability? Uh, okay, so I think I can answer this question as well. Any plans for EVM chain interoperability or cross-chain partnerships or game asset integration with other projects? Um, at the moment, we don't have any firm plans but uh, there are possibilities up around this something that i'm personally in in charge of because in let's say in my spare time i'm researching uh, additional things additional features that we can uh, implement into our nft system uh, the whole nft ecosystem that we have which is already by the way miles ahead from uh, what other projects have uh we could have something like that but i'm i gotta say i'm not saying that we will have it from technological perspective we could have it and we need to see we need to find partners who are gonna be fit for us and uh, us for them of course so it's a, a bi-directional uh, relationship to way street um, so, at the moment, no plans, but uh, we do keep this uh, in mind as an idea. Let me go to the next question. Okay, uh, Cveta, if I have pronounced nickname correctly is asking the hype around blockchain and nfts has made most traditional players to want to get on board however the major challenge majority of them face is the issue of complex and non-user friendly uix design of most of these blockchain gaming projects Will you try to make things as simple as possible and ensure smooth gaming experience? What about some guides for new players on how to connect wallets and stuff like that? Will you try your possible best to ensure they are available as well? Good question and something that is already partially answered but I'm gonna cover uh, some of the things again. Um, like I said previously, most of the blockchain projects are blockchain based games are coming purely from blockchain perspective and background that's fine we are coming from multiple directions from blockchain perspective from uh, from video game perspective likewise 
myself and my team, we are game developers by default. That's our nature. That's our main profession. Game developers and artists. And the answer would be yes. We are going to try our absolute best to make things uh, easier and easy to grasp for your average player. Uh, when it comes to connecting uh, wallet and uh, let's say crypto and blockchain related things with the game this is something that I have uh, uh, talked about with my colleague Cajun how we can make the ex experience uh, smooth and uh, let me also mention this many games blockchain based games they are forcing you to operate outside the game itself you would have to accept uh, uh, things in your web browser when it comes to uh, MetaMask, for example. They are using solutions that are outside the game. And we are taking different approach. Totally opposite. The idea is for players to only... I mean, eventually they are gonna be capable of focusing on the game itself game plan that's it that's all of the things that you're gonna need some of the things uh, we might even replace from the website itself for, for example for the future we are thinking okay i'm not promising anything i gotta be careful about promises but we are even thinking of making it in such way that you can trade your nfts with others just as, as a, just as one example within the game n not having to go to the website marketplace or or something like that that's something that we might have uh when it comes to user inter user interface and user experience uh we are already using some of the techniques such as tooltips so you if you hover over any of uh, the buttons inside the game or 3d nft showroom uh, you can have tooltip explanations and descriptions which tell you how to do things. And we're also gonna have uh, supplementary tutorials and, and guides. So we are aware that in order to have a successful blockchain-based game project, you need to connect multiple spheres, people of multiple interests, backgrounds, some people are coming f purely from blockchain background and, and perspective. And we have traditional gamers, simple gamers who are, who are getting into crypto blockchain uh, world. And our mission is to find common uh, denominators. What is the common language that we can use to communicate things so that multiple types of people, multiple personalities, people with different backgrounds, different experiences can understand, play and uh, experience our, our game and our metaverse in general. We are aware of that and uh, yeah, we are gonna put our best effort uh, and uh, in ensuring that. Uh, I hope I have answered the question and let me go to the next one. Uh, Net Key is asking Cosmic was created due to the rise of NFTs trend. That's a question. So, what will happen if the market changes radically to another trend than NFTs? Will you adapt or will Cosmic keep developing everything related to NFTs? What do you see from NFT five years from now? Uh, I like this question, this multi-question question. question. <laughs> um, uh, with regards to timing, I might not be the best person to answer this question because I was uh, I joined this project uh, back in the mid December 2021 and uh, by that time I think the wizards collection was already sold out but 
if I may comment, yes, when it comes to timing, Cosmic was created due to Rise of NFT's trend. But when I was on uh, the interview with uh, Wizard Blizzard, um, I proposed that uh, we should convert, we could and we should convert the 2D NFT collection of Wizards into 3D. And my, I myself, if I may ask, if I may say, in initially I, w I was relatively, I was relatively late into the whole NFT trend, because I saw little to no value in 2D profile picture style NFTs, and we are talking about uh, CryptoPunks. Uh, what's the other one? Uh, Board Ape uh, Yacht Club, uh, Degenerate uh, Ape Yacht Club, and all of that trash. You know, honestly, in my opinion, that's trash. And I wasn't on board uh, that initial trend because me being game developer, someone who is who's been working with 3D graphics, computer graphics for. 13 years almost I knew from the very beginning how easy it is to spam create a collection of 2d nfts and uh, I saw that there is much more value to be extracted and offered to people and this is something that I keep saying and uh, I'm probably gonna tear up my lungs uh, saying this thing. But hey, I gotta say this again. Our NFTs are way ahead compared to other competition. Even the most uh, the most successful projects like uh, Base uh, and uh, CryptoPunks and uh, what's the other one? Uh, um, Sandbox. And X Infinity. Our NFTs, so, by the way, some of them are converting to 3D NFTs to some extent, but they are using offline rendering, which isn't uh, the the proper thing. We are using real time rendering. So we have. It all started with 2D NFTs, and frankly speaking, Cosmic did the same thing by selling 2D NFT collection, but. Uh, it was meant uh, as soon as I joined the project, I said, hey, let's convert this uh, collection into 3D. And this is something that uh, is uh, going to be in-game, playable, 3D, NFT collection. And if you have a wizard or an elf or land plot, you compare to other projects and other NFT collections, uh... With other collections, what you can do, and they, uh, you can you can print them, you can flex around social media, your Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, hey or Twitter, hey I bought this CryptoPunk and okay what? You bought a trend. I mean, okay there is value. It's it's social status. Okay I I get it I get it okay, but there is much more than that. And with 3Ds, 3D, with NFTs in general, there is much more than just plain stupid. So, sorry for my language, but that's my opinion. From and I can argue all night and day about uh, these things because this is something that I've been working on for for quite a lot, quite a long time. Uh, 3D NFTs are much better than 2D NFTs. And you uh, have you guys seen? I think you've all seen those memes. <laughs> I can just right click and download uh, your NFT as an image. Um, well, okay, to some extent those people are right. Yes, the blockchain itself has a record who owns what. But when it comes to 3D NFTs, especially those that are in game playable. It's extremely hard, and maybe I should say it isn't possible. It isn't possible to 
download as an image or download as a 3D model, so to say, uh, a 3D NFT compared to 2D NFTs. In order to do that, you would literally need to hack me and access and you, would, you wouldn't be able to accomplish even in that scenario. So what I wanted to say, you would need to hack myself or someone around and access the source 3D files, which you, you cannot. I mean, if you are a if you are that good hacker, well, you you can you could, but even if you do manage to do that, you need to have authority to implement that in the game itself. And guess what? You cannot do that because <laughs> I'm not gonna allow you. Okay, you can you can access those 3d models but i'm not gonna allow you to implement that uh, into the game itself so that's another layer of protection if i may say layer of protection or layer of validity of 3d nfts compared to 2d nfts and uh, let me see what's the other part of this question uh, so, what will happen if the market changes radically to another trend than NFTs? Um, okay. Uh, first, first of all, okay. NFTs, in my opinion, are not gonna go anywhere in uh, quite some time because NFTs, at 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 the core, what they are, they are assets. They're, they're still multimedia assets and files. And uh, we have things like 2D images, something that I've covered in the previous uh, answer. We have 3D models, animations. We have, uh, there is also possibility to have music as NFT. Something that's already been uh, worked on on other projects. I've, I I don't have all the time of uh, of the world to cover to read all the news, but as far as I know, uh, uh, well known uh, and popular musicians are already selling their music as NFTs. So sound as NFT, videos as NFTs. It's all about multimedia assets images 3d models animations videos um music sound I, I mean i've covered them so i don't think that nfts are gonna go anywhere because they are like an attribute additional attribute to something that already exists Something that has already existed for, for 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 decades. We had music, we had video games, we had 3D models, we had animations, we had all of that. So what NFT as if I may say as an extra layer, what they are doing, what they are adding is uh they are adding extra security and proof of ownership, which says that only certain person is holding that certain specific nft um so that's my first argument but let's say that nfts are out of trend i mean you may you may say that bear market is uh is uh an end to this trend okay let's say that uh, let's pretend that it is okay uh what will happen if the market changes radically to another trend than NFTs? Will you adapt or will Cosmic uh, keep developing everything related to NFTs? What do you see from NFTs uh, five years from now? Uh, so one thing that we have been discussing internally for months already is that no matter what you have to do with blockchain, and uh, no matter how creative, how good looking or whatever your NFT collection is, at the end of the day, if you are making a video game 
based on blockchain, regardless if it is uh, a blockchain game, it's still a video game and it still needs to be a good one. So this is something that I've already mentioned a couple of times. We are approaching this whole project for, from multiple perspectives. That is blockchain, NFT, but also video game. The video game itself needs to be a good one. Because if we don't have that, we are just gonna be like one in million. Uh, e your every other average blockchain project uh, that are so-called uh, walking simulators. Uh, on on my side of things, I already have. I've already implemented with uh, with with my team and uh, with my colleague Cajun some of the most advanced uh, systems that uh, we have out there and we keep on inventing i personally keep on inventing and thinking okay how can we extract more value from nfts and uh, make them as advanced as it gets so we had we were one of the first projects to cover to tr uh to traverse from 2D NFTs into 3D NFTs. And not just 3D NFTs, because I've seen many projects by default when they when they talk about 3D NFTs, they talk about something that is called offline rendering. Which means something that is isn't inside the game itself. So um something that you get as a supplementary thing. By the way, for uh a couple of weeks I saw a video on LinkedIn where there was a guy filming offering a tutorial for normal people, normal players, how to convert and import their 3D NFTs into their games. Which from my opinion and from my perspective was ridiculous. Because, frankly speaking, guys, am I expecting any of you to download a 3D software, learn it, and then manually be importing your NFTs into any of the games? Frankly, I'm not. And it should not be your, your job. Your experience should be as smooth as possible, as seamless as possible. Not having to download any extra software and for God forbid learn additional skills, which take, by the way, take years to learn, at least a few months to learn the basics. Okay, when it comes to 3D modeling software, and I can, I can literally talk for hours from deep technical perspective. Why is that ridiculous? But. Uh, our approach is to, and my personal approach, because I'm in charge of making the NFTs 3D and advanced, etc. With, with my team as well. Um, our approach is to make the whole thing a smooth experience. So right away, our wizards and elves are something that can be... Uh, animated can be controlled inside the inside the game itself i mean not right now we don't have thing we don't have that particular thing published but they are made in such way and as we're developing the game you will be able to experience exactly that that's the point you buy an elf you you'll be able to control that elf just like in any other game that would be your character that would be your avatar that's the value that's the point and uh, so we are already advanced on that front so the nft trend itself we are gonna stay in my opinion as as as, as advanced as it gets and if there is a switch in trends Let's say that NFTs just die out. At the end of the day, like I said, we are still gonna keep on developing the game itself. 
the game itself, like I said, has to be a good one. Because at the end of the day, it's a video game. It's not something that we are just calling a video game. It is going to be a proper video game. Proper video game project. That's it. So we're going to keep on inventing uh, whatever that is. Just by our default nature, we keep on being creative and innovative. And we already are on multiple fronts. Like I said, just when it comes to NFTs in itself and, and uh, my colleague Cajun can cover uh, blockchain side of things. Because when I was talking with him, I've heard many examples. I'm not, I'm not going to be talking about blockchain, but I've heard many examples how other projects are struggling and doing things wrong on blockchain side of things. So yeah, I guess Cajun should be answering questions that are specific to blockchain, but... Uh, from perspective of game development and NFTs, we are ad we are more advanced, uh, especially when it comes to NFTs. The game itself, not as much because it takes time. The project is very big, but we are working on it. Let me cover the next question. And before that, I'm gonna sip some water. Um, <clears throat> um, Rea Bora is asking this question, which I think I'll be able to answer only partially. How easy or simplified is Cosmic MMO RPG game, and how can you your play to earn mechanism be achieved with less monetary demand um i cannot answer that question that isn't for me that's for other people what type of audience will your games suit more crypto or non-crypto gamers um yeah, I can answer this before proceeding with the next question from this person. Um, the answer is uh, to strike a perfect balance, as perfect as we can. Because it's, like I said already, it's not about isolating and focusing on any specific uh, um, demographic. We want to cover multiple demographics and types of uh, players. People who do have blockchain and crypto experience, but they might not have as much as uh, traditional or standard gaming ex experience. On the other hand, we have opposite uh, uh, types of uh, people who are gamers and haven't heard or haven't experienced or had any job to do with uh, crypto, blockchain, and NFTs. This is a blockchain-based video game. The definition itself is meant to uh, cover multiple types of people. Uh, frankly speaking, there are people who are is, uh, in the project in the community for solely for uh what's what's the word for return on investment reasons that's fine we are not gonna shoot them away but uh, uh we are not solely focusing on uh, providing you with uh, roi or the play to earn mechanism which is something that we gotta be very careful about because play to earn by definition is you know tricky if you're gonna earn money someone needs to lose money and we as a project we cannot be pumping out money just like that we need to have source of uh, income and that's something that's gonna be covered in uh, 
I guess I, I guess in other AMA sessions, but uh, play to earn is tricky. And uh, what's the definition of play to earn? Like I said, if you want to earn by playing a game, someone needs to that money, that token that you are earning needs to come from somewhere. Um, and uh, uh, let me see. Uh, And the last part of the question from this person is in what ways do being blockchain oriented make cosmic MMORPG gaming better than traditional MMORPGs? Oh, that's a good question and I do believe that I have a pretty good answer. And for this answer I gotta give props to my colleague Cajun. There was... I think it was internal discussion I, I don't remember exactly, but uh, there was someone asking, uh, I'm, I'm not going to be able to quote exactly, but someone said the base price in order to play this game is the cost of a character NFT uh, plus cost of a land plot NFT which is at the moment let's say roughly uh, around $250 USD the equivalent of US USD or should I say USDT or, or USDC so 250 plus something around 120 I think so basically the argument from that person was you need to pay the equivalent of somewhere around $300 to just enter to start this game. Which isn't true but let's say that it is okay let's pretend for the sake of strength of my argument I'm gonna pre pretend that it is true. Not just my argument uh, by the way Cajun's uh, argument as well. In other games, in traditional games, uh, you need to buy the equivalents of tokens and currencies of that game, that other game that you're playing, that would be your traditional MMORPG or not just MMORPG, any other video game. And that is a closed system. If you have a fancy skin in, let's say, World of Warcraft or League of Legends uh, or Fortnite, other games, na you name it, any any game. You cannot transfer that to any other game. It's a closed system. Um, and uh, you can, to some extent, those skins and assets that you have, to some extent, yes, you can sell them. For example, if you have a bunch of rare skins in Counter-Strike, as far as I know, I've never, by the way, I've never done that, but I do have a friend who is doing that, so I I guess it's still a thing, uh, is that you can, once you obtain those rare skins of your weapons or assets, whatever they are, you can sell some of them or or maybe even all of them to to other parties and return some of the return some of the money but what about other things what about the progress itself that you've done in the game that you've literally grinded out the, the, throughout the whole uh, your spell or career in the game itself uh, what about that you cannot convert and transfer that elsewhere you cannot sell that and transfer that elsewhere. It, it just isn't an option. It's a closed economical system. But with blockchain, uh, you have the ability to sell your NFTs and your progress to greater extent, much greater extent compared to traditional video games, hence also including MMORPGs. 
because you can sell your characters, you can sell your elves, and if uh, wizards, land plots, uh, resources that you acquired through grinding or through buying, whatever, and be done with the game and return at least good portion of what you have already invested. Invested. Be break even, which means uh, to take out from the project the equivalent amount of what you inserted into it. Or the best option would be to exit the game with more than you had previously to take out more than you initially let's say pledged for lack of a better word uh, inserted into the project itself um let's say that you are just done with gaming overall you rage quit the game or whatever let like maybe you start a family and or you get a job that uh, you something happens in your life and Either that's your decision or force majeure and you cannot uh, play the game. No problem. You can sell almost everything. Return good portion or even be well better than you when you started playing the game. When you entered the whole thing. No problem. What, what game allows you that? No traditional game allows you that. And I again say big props to Cajun for this argument. So this is something that I borrowed as an argument for, from him. So that is the answer why our game, why our project being blockchain based is better than others, better than traditional MMO RPGs and video games in, in, in general. Uh, okay, let me proceed with the next question. Uh, I think this is an interesting question. Uh, Cecile Izzard is asking two questions. Looking into the future, what are some of the biggest challenges you face in developing a MMO RPG and MMO RPG to bring in? tens of thousands if not millions of users that's the first question um, yeah before I answer the question I would like to give you some insight from technical perspective well sorry guys but you need to listen to my technical uh, insight because well I'm a, I'm a technical person what I've been seeing lately as a trend on uh, social media and particularly I'm speaking about LinkedIn I've seen projects who are demonstrating their technology of scaling their games by doing what I'm gonna explain in technical way so when you have a video game that is meant to be multiplayer one and those characters majority of them are meant to be controlled by real humans real persons and you can also add npcs which stands for non playable character so for example traders couriers uh quest givers etc um, that is posing a serious challenge to server scalability because there are two major major constraints that you have when you're working on a blockchain based uh, sorry didn't meant to say blockchain based but uh, there are two major uh, constraints that you have when you are working on a multiplayer video game the first constraint is a general one that you have when you are developing any kind of video game and that is 
performance graphics performance um, when you have low FPS low frames per second the reason for that is optimization or should I say lack of optimization or or lesser hardware so it is something that's been a balance that always needed to be struck for decades. Will my computer be able to run XYZ game? So that's the first constraint. We need to optimize the game so that it can run on multiple devices, whether they are lesser or better. We need to make it, I mean, we cannot make this game work on your 10 year old computer. Probably not gonna happen. Probably not gonna happen. Don't count on that. So we need to have certain minimum system requirements. For example, this CPU, AMD or Intel, this graphics card, this amount of RAM, etc. That's the first constraint. The second big constraint is specific to multiplayer games and that one has to do with bandwidth. So not everybody has super duper fast uh, internet connection and uh, so there is the bandwidth itself but also ping or delay of data being sent and received. And in order to play within that constraint, we need to, uh, not just us, not just we, but in general, game developers, when it comes to scaling, this is why I mentioned it's about server scaling. Uh, how, how do you scale so that you can have thousands of players? You gotta be very smart, you gotta optimize things. Um, you also have to uh, test test your your game your system because it's uh, one thing when you do things in uh, in theory in planning and uh, it's totally other thing when you're doing things in, in putting them in practice. But let me let me come back to anecdote that I wanted to tell you the trend that I'm seeing uh, on LinkedIn. I didn't finish that story, so. Uh, what other projects are demonstrating with their videos online is when I said that other characters are meant to be controlled by real humans what they do actually is in order to fake things they use bots and NPCs which are not controlled by real humans which means that you are Yes, you still have this first constraint, which is always going to stay relevant, but the other constraint, they are getting rid of that. But you, you cannot get rid of that. That's is equally as important as the first one. But they are omitting it. They are avoiding it totally by using NPCs, or should I say bots, to display, hey, look, we can, we can have thousands of characters being displayed at the same time. And if you let me say, you can even fake that to ridiculous extent. You can have those bots have above their heads, above their 3D models, have random player names. And you looking at things outside. How you can tell if that is uh, real or not? You cannot. E even even I wouldn't be able to tell uh, the, the difference because th that's the extent to which uh, uh, AI. When I say AI, I don't necessarily mean artificial intelligence that you're seeing being used as a buzzword. I'm seeing as NPC, so gameplay logic characters that are controlled by computers in order to make games uh, enjoyable and NPCs are used around 
around the world when it, everywhere when it comes to single player games. If you shoot an enemy in your game, well, that's an NPC. You shoot an NPC or AI. That's the thing. That's the expl explanation. That's something very basic, but I'm just making sure that uh, people who are not familiar with traditional gaming uh, do understand that as well. Um, um, so, coming back to the question, how to bring tens of thousands, if not millions of users. Uh, there are multiple ways. Uh, if you want me to go technical, you can uh, have multiple servers, you can have multiple worlds worlds which which we are already having uh and also you can uh, make things scalable in creative ways but uh, it is possible we do have solutions and we are gonna keep on uh, finding more solutions and also optimizing things no matter what smart solution we find you still need to optimize things and that's something that I can talk literally for hours, but I'm gonna spare you that. And I'm gonna go to the next question. Uh, uh, Milo Walker is asking, many NFT games today set high costs to start the game and therefore start with a small player base. Does Cosmic Wizard platform have an entrance fee or starting conditions? And if so, what are they? Do I need to hold an NFT or hold a certain amount of tokens in order to enjoy and play the Cosmic, Uni Cosmic Wizard games? That's something that's been answered uh, throughout previous uh, AMAs. Uh, it's answered on the website itself, CosmicUniverse.io. And... Uh, something that I've myself answered throughout this session uh, likewise uh, you are required to have an NFT character and land plot but uh, so the best thing would be to buy them but uh, if you don't have or don't want to spend you'll be able to rent them from someone borrow from someone else uh, but uh, from cost effective effectiveness perspective it would be the best thing to just trade out buy them and on top of that you can even uh, uh, rent uh, your nfts and assets to someone else and get an, ex uh, an extra income um, let me see the next question by rt zayden how flexible slash involved will the in-game economy and ecosystem be? Will there be space for the selling of a branded physical cosmic tea, quote unquote, for example, like actual high quality tea shipped to people? How important will the community aspect interaction of the game be? Um, this isn't something that's been planned, but uh, another uh, case where I would say, uh, why not? Because uh, having such thing in our game and metaverse itself would bring an extra income if someone wants to advertise their products and services within the game. Why not? That's something that's been that's being done across the board um, so my answer would be we don't have any definite uh, decision on that but why not and that's the point of metaverses in general and even video games are 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 starting to pick on pick on this uh, pick up on this uh, whole area for the past few years because uh Metaverses are meant to be more than just video games. They are meant to be alternative universes. And uh, unless I want to go really off topic and to really prolong this session, there are many kinds of metaverses, 
many types of metaverses e-commerce industrial video games we are talking about video games specifically right here with cosmic universe but there is nothing constraining you to solely focus on the video game itself so you can expand that's the beauty of metaverses and projects like this because you can expand that's the point and connect them with uh, other industries with other mediums uh, and different use cases just like uh, just like Zayden explained hey we have this cool delicious tea and hey we can advertise it and maybe even ship it to your home if you if you want to try it out yeah um why not just like any other marketing any other branding uh, if your favorite sports club is uh, having a uh, products and services and companies being advertised on their jerseys why we cannot have the same thing but uh, it's easier said than done we need to see what projects what companies would be interested into this you know uh, to make uh, connections that are mutually beneficial but uh, I would say I would say why not and how important will the community aspect in interaction of the game be? Uh, well, I would say that's the core of the metaverse itself, the game itself. So it is meant to be community based. The people, the players who are going to be playing the game and consuming, spending time within the metaverse itself. Um, they are gonna be the metaverse, if I may say. Just the same way, uh, just the same way that humans, we people, humans, are playing a role in the existence and the meaning of uh, planet Earth. That's literally the answer. The equivalent of that would be the answer for uh, metaverse. So without. Uh, Without that, you don't have anything. Um, are you gonna let uh, NPCs just play the game? That would be useless. So, yeah. Uh, let me see if this question is for me. I think this isn't for me. Uh, uh, let me see. What's the next question that is meant to be for me? Uh, Logos767 is asking, what are the advantages of owning a piece of the cosmic universe? In other words, does it give us some kind of advantage over other users who don't have those lands? Owning one of the 7,060 tokenized lots gives us statistics uh, and exclusive access for f future purchases. Um, in order to play the game, you need to have a character and land plot. And... Uh, Instead of uh, borrowing that from someone else, uh, something that I've already said, straight out pu purchasing uh, would uh, make more sense because uh, you don't have to. I mean, it, looking at things longer, medium, and long term, uh, it is more cost efficient to just straight out buy an NFT. And that's solely focusing on your duration of playing the game itself and on top of that you can rent your your character and land plot because the question is specifically about land plots uh, you will be able to uh, lend that uh, rent that to someone else and get an extra income and uh, when it comes to other bonuses and the future purchases, uh, something that I cannot answer at the moment, uh, it's going to give you more than just statistics. 
there is this one uh, feature that I'm not sure if I should be sharing because I'm not sure if this is a public thing. Regardless, uh, I've already talked many times how advanced our 3D characters and NFTs are already. But on NFT land plot, uh, like I said, I'm not sure if this is a public info, but we are gonna have even more advanced system when it comes to land plot NFTs, which will be a which would allow players to go through the map and not just look for. I mean, it's. Again, I need to use contrast and talk about other projects. Your average blockchain project, which is selling NFT land plots, what they're doing is they're selling something that is pixel grid. Okay, and truth to be told, yes, that's that's actually the same way that uh, NFT land plots uh, are being sold, uh, were, were sold uh, back in February for Cosmic Universe. And by that time, we already had this. Uh, we already had this mechanic ready, but the map, the environment itself, wasn't ready. So we literally had nothing to implement uh, to apply to the the mechanic itself. Uh, I'm not gonna go cover this in depth. Because in few weeks time or thereabouts you will be able to uh, witness this and uh, test this out. In a similar way with uh, just like with uh, what's the word with uh, 3D NFT showroom. We are going to have something similar for NFT land plots. I cannot give you the exact uh, details, in-depth details. Nor can I give you exact time frame, but uh, it's something that's been uh, worked on, and uh, you might be able to experience this uh, uh, rather sooner than later. And uh, let me go to the next question. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, one thing that I forgot to answer from the previous questions is... Uh, uh, let me find it. Uh, the Eureka moment. Uh, Cecile Izzard asked the second question. And what are some of the... Well, it's misspelled. It says... Eureka instead of Eureka. Uh, and what are some of the Eureka moments you had during the development so far? Um, that's actually a tough question for me because spending all this time developing the project, you end up being in a tunnel vision by default. Um, but let me try to think of some. Uh, what I would say is my personal favorite would be uh, connecting the game with uh, with blockchain. Uh, although I saw the possibility how to do that in a proper way, but with the help of uh, Cajun. So him and I worked together on this. So props to him for for working on on this particular feature. We were working together, but uh, he has bigger share of uh, props to be given. Um, so my eureka moment was when I realized how easier it is to connect the game with the blockchain compared to what I used to think, and. Uh, even what I thought previously was better and more advanced compared to other projects. So, so I mean, you wouldn't believe how many projects out there are 
still lacking blockchain connectivity and they are doing things in the uh, web 2 way they are using external external apis and web 2 implementations to uh, make uh, to establish communication between the, the game itself and blockchain uh we are ahead of that front luckily but that would be my eureka moment let me try to find another one um uh, Hmm. It's a tough question, like I said. Maybe I would say uh, when it comes to NFTs, realizing in pra putting putting things in practice and how to how to express myself. The concepts and ideas when it comes to making nfts advanced is something that i've been personally interested uh, since uh, since last year autumn so that's almost a year from now a, a, a year ago but i realized some of the things that i initially didn't think were capable of being made as nfts those would be my my uh eureka moments when i realized that we can extract even more than i initially thought myself uh that has to also uh that also has to do with uh modular structures and realizing that an NFT doesn't have to be a single piece thing. But I need to stop here because I'm going to be revealing some of the things that I should not be for multiple reasons because they are mostly in works and not ready yet so that I don't want to come across as that we are promising something but in couple weeks time or months you will be able to to see that ju ju just the same uh, way I said for NFT land plots but modular structures are another advanced system that we have when it comes to NFTs but that's gonna be covered uh, in uh, some other occasion uh, I do have a couple more questions to answer so we are coming uh, closer to the end uh, let me just sip a bit more water Pyramid 6 is asking Building on Unreal Engine 5 Do you project within your long-term plan that we will ever see the Cosmic Universe playable on a PlayStation or Xbox platform when these AAA gaming systems start to incorporate crypto games into their game offerings? Um Thanks in advance for your time in running these AMAs. Hmm. Um, frankly, it's a matter of establishing the numbers. What are the actual and practical numbers when it comes to how many people are actually utilizing uh, these uh, these platforms? For for example, d uh, during the original AMA, uh, we covered one question which had to do with uh, VR, virtual reality. Um, my answer would be long term. That's a possibility, but something that i would definitely something that i would definitely not promise or decide at this moment um it's an option but probably definitely the least important platform at the moment 
I would say. So our number one priority is uh, for the main game, uh, personal computers, which is PC. That means Windows and also Linux. Uh, Mac support might come, but that's our least priority when it comes to uh, personal computers. Also, another big focus is mobile platforms, which luckily covers both uh, major platforms, and that would be Android and iOS, and also I would say tablets, why not, because it's still iOS, I would say. But uh, we are covering the most important platforms first, which is PC and also mobile with Dawn of Krypton game. Uh, when it comes to the, uh, what's the word, when it comes to the future of, uh, uh, and fate of, uh, the fully fledged game or mobile, I'm not sure if that would work because MMOs are by default not impossible, but extremely hard to pull off on, uh, mobile platforms, so I cannot promise and say anything specific on that but uh, PC and mobile platforms are our main priorities when it comes to PlayStation or Xbox or any other uh, I cannot rule them out but frankly I told you the, these are those are the list of importance uh, for us but I'm, I'm I cannot say no I cannot straight out say no. Who knows what's gonna happen in a few years time. Who knows. Uh, now. Logo767. Quest, uh, question. I would like to know if the game slash metaverse is based on player skills and stats. That is. Having a character. Having a character. Elves, wizards, apes, trolls, etc. That identifies us in NFT. Will give users an advantage and an increase in statistics in games purchases. Also with the avatar char slash character that in identifies us. Have any value and can it be traded in uh, marketplace? Uh, well, there are benefits. So, first of all, some of the characters are just nicer looking. But that's, in my opinion, the least of uh, important thing. Um, yes, they do carry additional, uh, additional bonuses with, uh, with themselves. If, for, for example, if you're... A wizard or elf is more rare than others it's gonna have a better staking uh, character staking bonus by default uh, you also have professions that you can uh, train on your characters and uh, well those professions are gonna have their utility for example fishing will allow you to fish faster or better uh, Carpentry skill will profession will uh, allow you to do better comp carpentry well to produce better products and services within the game that are gonna be uh, uh, demanded sought after by other players so that's gonna be valuable just like in real life the eco economy in in the game itself in our game is meant to represent to great extent real life economy how it works so uh you have better skills well you're gonna be better at producing uh uh goods and services just just like i said uh, uh someone needs fish and their character doesn't necessarily have at all or has very very bad uh badly developed uh, fishing skill well they will be able to buy fish from others that might be you and if your character in particular has a highly trained fishing scale well you'll be able to fish 
faster, maybe even more quality fish, etc. Et so there are gonna be uh, benefits to owning uh, pair more advanced NFTs. Um, is it gonna be the requirement for you to play the game? Uh, no, you can still play with uh, cheaper NFTs, but uh, hey, the better your characters are trained, the easier your progress in the game is gonna be. Uh, oh, let me answer the other part of the question. Also, with, will the avatar slash character that indifies us have any value that can be traded in market? Well, like I said, yes. So your NFTs uh, have certain certain value. Either they are fancy looking, or have better trained skills, uh, and uh, if someone wants to skip the progress in the game and trade their uh, and trade their worst character for something that is better, uh, I. I think that would be an option. I think we are gonna have that. And uh, but yeah, at the end of the day, like I said previously, once you're done with the game, you can you can just uh, sell off your assets and return most, if not uh, even more than you initially inserted uh, and or should I say spent on the project itself. Uh, Let's see uh, if I have any more questions to answer myself. Uh, Perko is asking if the last thirty percent of if the last thirty percent of plots don't get migrated from harmony slash uh, also lost wallets etc will the map still have continu continuity and what problems will it arise uh, that's something that's actually been already answered uh, by myself uh, and by Cajun uh, during the initial AMA session that we had uh, uh, previously um we won't have problems or anything that's uh, uh, that's gonna prevent us from making the map itself look beautiful because big big portion of uh, make, making the map beautiful is gonna be uh, uh, taken care of by players themselves because players are gonna be decorating their land plots how, how they please and we have also discussed some uh, ways or uh, some creative ideas and ways how to uh, display those land plots who are not migrated which are not which are lost etc by maybe having extremely grown uh, grass something that displays hey this is something that's been abandoned but uh, mm, the answer is our problems are gonna arise well to some extent they are already ar arising because we won't have we ha won't have the continuous community but that's not a problem because just like in real world you have people who like to live in crowded communities surrounded by many neighbors but on the other hand, there are people who like to be loners and to be able to have more free space around their land plots. Just like in real life, literally. Uh, I think that's it. Yeah, that's it for my side of questions. Just shy of an uh, hour and a half. Um... Thank you for watching this session and also for uh, posting your questions and comments. Uh, keep being engaged and uh, let us know what do you, uh, how do you like this uh, format, and also provide us with uh, with feedback. And 
it was me, Drago, the chief game developer on the Cosmic Universe uh, project. Uh, thank you for watching again and uh, listening. Uh, see you around. See you on the Discord server. And uh, take care. See you around. Bye-bye.